Hi, and welcome back to Our Daily Bread. Children truly are a gift from God, no matter if they're your own child, children in the neighborhood, uh, if they are grandchildren, if they're your nieces or nephews, you know, if they're children that you see walking down the street. But indeed, they are a gift from our Heavenly Father, and He is fond of children, you know, not only of sons and daughters of the Most High God, sons of God, right, and daughters of God, but He is he is so clear in His Word that He has a great love toward the little ones. You know, Jesus talks about it would be better that a millstone be hung around the neck of somebody and he'd be cast into the sea than to offend one of these little ones, to harm one of these little ones. The Lord is very clear that if we have children, he has an expectation on us to train up a child in the ways that they should go. He also has an expectation on the child. If you're in a parenting relationship or a kind of dy dynamic where it's the maybe it's the grandparent raising the child, well, there's an expectation on the child as well to honor thy mother and father. But with both of these, and we're going to look at this a little bit today, with both of these, there comes a promise. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful how the Lord structures everything pertaining to creation, pertaining to this world, pertaining to even family in such a way that offers promise and it offers hope no matter what's going on. Let's first look at what the Lord has to say about children. Psalm 127.3 Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. Family has always been the focus of our Father. You know, if you think about the garden, one of the first things He told them to do was to multiply, to fill the earth. So the foundation of family has always had its roots in the Lord. We are created in His image and likeness. Let's begin in Exodus 20, 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You know, this is the only commandment with a promise. I think it's just amazing how our Heavenly Father directs it towards children, whom He loves so much. He has such an affection for, doesn't He? And we're to have that same affection towards the children, whether they're our own or whether they're unrelated to us, right? Look at 3 John 1, and we're going to look at verse 4. It says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. A big hallelujah to that. There is truly no greater joy, aside from the joy of the Lord, then when we hear our children have chosen to walk with Jesus, when we hear them preaching to another about Jesus, the joy in our hearts is just, it's unlike anything that you will ever experience in the world. If you are a born again follower of Jesus Christ, to hear your children walking in it, or even to hear of brothers and sisters who perhaps you've been witnessing to and speaking to, because that's really what this verse is, is symbolizing, right? This wasn't about his children. This was about the congregation. This was the body of Jesus Christ being built up. And his excitement about the newly converted, right? Walking with the Lord and choosing to follow and obey Jesus. And what's also incredible when we first started today is we were talking about the the promises of the Lord, right? That it's not only toward the children, but it's also promised to our, us parents. Let's read in Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know, we're talking about perfect order. We're talking about the family unit, the family structure that the Lord has created and intended since the garden all the way until his return. He is a family man. The Lord is a family man. Jesus, you know, is a, a proponent of the children. He is a protector of the children. And I just love how the Lord does this, that he not only gives children a command and a promise, 
He also gives us as parents a command and a promise. And, and with this verse, train up is just what you think it is, right? We teach, we teach them, teach them the way that he should go. This is the journey, right? The direction, the manner, or habit, course of life, moral character. Teach them the way. And I love how this, the way he should go, even that points to Jesus, doesn't it? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And here in this proverb, we hear the way he should go. And this is pointing to Jesus. And when he is old, and get this, the, the phrase, he is old, I think it was, I thought it was kind of funny to become old, to grow old properly, to have the chin hanging down from like an old man with the chin hanging down, decrepit, <laughs> decrepit. So when the Lord is speaking here, and giving us this promise that if we train up our child in the way, Jesus, right? When he's old, when he's decrepit, he will not depart from it. Oftentimes we want those moments where we get to rejoice and be exceeding glad when we see our children walking in the way, when we get to see them praising Jesus. But if if today that's not the case for you, if you don't get to see your children praising the Lord and giving him glory and honor, you keep to your part of what this verse tells you. Keep training them up. Are your children your children no more because they're 18 years old? Do your children stop becoming your children when they're married and have children of their own? Do they stop being your children when they're in their 50s or 60s? No. Your child will always be your child. When he's saying train up your children, he is not just speaking of the younger, uh, more impressionable children. I truly believe he's speaking to us as parents, our children. So if you've got a relationship that is strained right now you keep focused on jesus you keep walking this out in a way that is pleasing to our heavenly father you keep taking his leading and his guidance in your path so that they can see that you're walking on that narrow road you know there is a lot to be said for the actual walk that we walk and the talk that we talk that it matches up that it's not just lip service, that it's not just something we do in the company of one or two people, but this is who we are on a regular basis. Those things show forth in our integrity, right? The character of who we are. Not only, like I said, when we're around other people, but when we're home and nobody else can see. Hold on to those promises. Hold on to the promise that the Lord has given you. The Lord loves the little children. He loves them so much that he gives them special angels. I really believe this. Look at uh, Matthew 18, 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Wow. Be kind to the little ones. Be kind to the littles, right? Give them that time and attention. You know, don't despise them. Don't scoff at them. Don't do the, you know, you're to be seen and not heard thing that so many have done over the years. Children are a blessing. They're a gift from God. Whether they're your own children or whether they're other people's children, they are indeed precious in the sight of God. Look at Proverbs 17, 6. Children's children are the crown of old men. And the word crown there means dignity. They are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. You see, it's a two-way street, isn't it? It works in unison. Parents, do your job. Train up your child in the ways they should go. Even if your children are grown and out of the house, and you don't think that there's any hope of this or that or the other thing, continue to live your life according to the precepts of Jesus, according to the commandments of the Lord, right? Follow him, love him, 
and in that love love others as well and when they are old decrepit they will not depart from it hang on to those promises today love y'all <laughs>